Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to hang out in between videos, come check out the Discord. We're also doing exclusive content over on Patreon. We're in the middle of Queendom 2. We're doing Mamamoo TV Season 6 right now, as well as Hotel Del Luna and a reality show that we're voting on this week. Um, today, though, we are continuing our deep dive into Rolling Quartz, uh, this time with their first album, Fighting. Um, I do want to kind of preface some of this with I wasn't able to find lyric videos for a fair number of these. So if the music videos or um, the live versions of things that we have don't have lyrics on them, we may have to deal without lyrics for some of these songs just because the color coded lyrics videos just didn't exist. Um, some of them do. Holler did. Uh, but I think Holler might be the only one. Anyways, we'll enjoy it regardless because the music's going to slap. We know that. Uh, let's get into it. Ah, we got lyrics. Okay, for Delight at least. Ooh, look at that video quality. Hmm. Okay. This breakdown though. And the, like the almost dueling guitars. I love that we got some harmonies in there too.
pretty. The stage setup was really nice too. It was really cool that this was basically like a music video and a live performance in one. I'm sure they didn't like record that uh, with live audio and, you know, route that through the music video. I'm pretty sure it's the studio audio we're hearing, but still they definitely performed that while they were shooting it, right? Like you could tell that even if uh, they weren't using that audio, that was being played live, um, which is really cool. Also, I got to give like major props to the sound engineer on this one, um, especially with like big over ear headphones on. This was a delight to listen to. They isolated the guitar and uh, the bass on either side of your head. Um, and then the drum kind of played in the back center. So it almost gave this sense of like spatial audio, like you were sitting right where um, Ja Young was essentially. Like if if you were listening to it, it's like sitting right in front, right in the middle of the group and they're playing all around you, which is really cool. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do real quickly for myself so that I don't one, embarrass myself, and two, I have something I can pronounce with. I'm going to pull up their names here. Um, because while I know what they are, I don't want to mess them up. Ah, here we go. Oh, no. All right. So we have Aram, Irie, Ja Young, and uh, Hyun Jung. And uh, what was the drummer's name? Young. Okay. This way we have names. Aram, Iri, Youngun, Ja Young, Young Jung. Young Jung. Okay, great. So uh Youngun in this one, her drumming like really, really drives the song for me anyway, right? Like at a section where like the drums actually kick out and they they stop uh playing all together gives this really nice break in feeling and then it builds up enough time for that anticipate anticipation for them to come back in and they hit really hard when she finally does come back in on the beat and it's just a a very nice touch um and then Aram and um uh, I think Irie, who is the, uh, yeah, Aram's playing the bass and then Irie's playing the guitar on the other side. Um, we're almost dueling right at the beginning, um, which was really cool, right? Because especially because they were bouncing back and forth in the headphones, it was nice to see. Um, all right, let's let's pay attention to the lyrics this time and see what the song's about. <laughs> Everybody's looking intense, and then there's Irie over there, like, just ball of sun sunshine, like, all right.
What I really like about uh, Rolling Courts is a lot of their lyrics feel almost like poetic. They like are definitely more dealing in symbolism and metaphor than kind of direct messaging, which is cool. And then the chorus kind of does drive home the point of what they're trying to go for. So, you know, like it felt kind of uh, almost like the song was about pleading with someone not to go right in the beginning. And then it's about like reminding them all of the good times and all of the things that they create now um, in these moments, these moments of passion and and uh, love and getting inside your mind is that like we're creating this feeling of delight and that feeling is eternal uh when you look back in your memories you know you're always going to remember how this felt um and it's kind of almost like saying stay with me because i that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna create these moments for you over and over again um at least that's my interpretation of it uh, the other thing I wanted to say is after the breakdown kicked in, Yeonjung like really kind of took my attention with a lot of her uh, guitar parts from the like middle to the end of the breakdown through the rest of the song. She had some really cool stuff going on. Um, so I do like that while uh, obviously Jae Young is kind of in that central position, that vocal position. They do a lot of work to share the musical load of the song so everybody feels like they get a standout moment um, in both the way they present the staging and the song composition itself. Like nobody feels like they're just there to back up uh, Jae Young, right? Like it feels like it's a cohesive unit. Everybody's important. Everybody makes up um, part of the song in kind of equal parts. Very cool. All right, let's keep going. Uh, we have the demo version now. I wonder what the difference is going to be.
They're pushing the harmonies a lot more in the demo version. Okay, I wonder if that's the, uh, the replacement for the breakdown in the original version, or in the final version. No, here comes the breakdown. Yeah. Okay, so from like a musical sounding standpoint, it didn't sound all that different. It felt like they were focused, uh, there was more focus on the harmonies from the other members in the demo version than the final version. It felt like they pulled back on that a little bit in the final version and only emphasized it uh, in, I think, one or two sections. Um, but I think overall still sounded fantastic, even when it was back in its demo form. Um, and like, it just kind of still showcases how well that they can handle things uh, from a balanced group perspective. Uh, video wise, right? Like much simpler and uh, probably done on a much lower budget because that other one was uh, pretty stellar looking. All right, let's check it out on a tour video. Again, I really like the way they shoot concert videos. Oh, the epic intro. I feel like Rolling Quartz is just like one of those bands or yeah, where like their live live footage is just so good.
<laughs> I'm starting to get like little tastes of personality here and there. And uh, I think that's Irie is just a ball of sunshine. Just happiness incarnate. What a rock star moment that is. Before we get into the next song there, right? Like, I do just want to stress that, like, their live performances are just something else. There's an energy that goes through them when they are performing live that is infectious. Uh, really cool to see. I hope we get consistent videos like that because that was awesome. I think that might have been my favorite way to watch that particular song. Um, something about the energy of them being in concert like that uh just really really did it for me but next up we have a song called holler uh this one doesn't have captions on it but there is a color-coded video for this one Given kind of very witchy vibes with their outfits this time. Oh yeah, really hitting that kind of tarot card vibe. Ooh. Oh, the blood-stained hands there. Oh, 
Is it more like vampire than witches? But And now there's guns. Ooh. Vampires, okay. That got really heavy there. Um, both kind of story direction wise and uh, musically. Um, yeah, before we get into it, I feel like the concept was that um, Ja Young was like this running this hotel as like a vampire mistress and inviting all of the other members slowly and converting them into vampires and Aram was the last one uh, and she tried to fight back and shot her and then uh, got turned anyway but I have a f I do wonder about that diamond I didn't I don't think I quite caught what that was all about anyway. Let's check out the lyrics to see if we can get a little more about the song itself. I guess they added Spanish and English subs to the video. Okay. Okay, so the vampire concept is kind of going into the lyrics themselves a little bit, too. Keep your head down, chat the head, you get 
a big kind of orchestral sounding build. So there's definitely this kind of literal interpretation. Oh, okay. There's roles here too. Uh, Hotelier, Jayong, also vampire. Shaman, Hyunjung, Prophet, Irie, Priestess, Youngun, and Assassin, Arm. Okay. So the Assassin was coming for the Hotelier and it felt like the other three were working for her or under her spell but um the thing for me right was that the lyrics did feel like they suited a vampire concept really well um and it was like this idea of this vampire saying you know like if you want to be uh immortal if you want to win if you want to have everything that you're looking for come to me accept all of me and only through me shall you like get everything you desire which usually in vampire stories is not quite how it goes right once they're actually enthralled um but that kind of alluring sense of of uh drawing someone in uh with temptations of everything they could desire is a very vampire concept uh cool way of putting it in but it also feels like it could be a continuation of the story from delight a little bit thematically right where delight felt like they were pleading for someone to not to go uh this almost felt like it was becoming a little more uh like drawing someone in um and ensnaring them in their web so that they can't go again right like this idea of they were hurt before this idea of having someone leave and then this more like next time i'm gonna make sure they don't go um but it feels like it could be a bit of a stretch. I could be pulling at straws there. Um, really, really cool song. All right, let me go back to my playlist now that we've found our lyrics and not the wrong translation. And we'll, we have a concert version. Which is probably just going to be the best way we watch this song. Yeah. 
breakdown is so heavy. Yeah, I definitely think that these lives are my favorite way to consume Rolling Quartz content as of right now. They're so energetic, they're so fun, the sound quality doesn't suffer any, and uh, it's well shot, right? Like, these kind of videos are absolutely fantastic, and I, I understand that for some, like, groups that are in bigger venues it's a lot harder to film something like this um but my goodness i wish other groups had concert footage that was this good um okay next we have the demo version Top up, the 
All right. Uh, hopefully somebody who is a little more adept at music than I uh, can let me know what the difference was in between the, right, the final version and the demo version here. It, I couldn't really tell. There was one part where I thought maybe they had uh, moved Jiayoung's vocals really far back in the mix and that it uh, compared to the first one, but I was having a hard time discerning by ear what the differences were. Uh, the other thing I did really, I was thinking about while we were watching this, that was really cool, was um, because they put emphasis on making sure that each of the members has screen time equally and like assigns this kind of focuses on personality as a group rather than just on the front man like a lot of uh, Western artists do. Um, I really find myself paying it closer attention to how each of the individual instruments sound and trying to pick out in the track, you know, who's doing what, what kind of cool little technical things are they doing that even a beginner like me in terms of like music uh, can pick up on, right? Like, I don't know anything about drumming, but like, I'm listening for little details that I might not listen to uh, explicitly in another kind of uh, genre or setup of music. Um, it's just fascinating to think about, right? Like that they they by associating each member strongly with a personality and with a uh, almost like an idol. Um, you really stress to the listener that they should be paying attention to not just the vocals, but to individually what each instrument is doing. Cool. Uh, anyway, next up we have Rock and Roll Paradise and Drum Solo. Oh. This looks like it's a little more recent, maybe? <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Ooh, we got a guitar solo too.
Okay, with the synths in there too. Oh, she's eating. That was a hell of a drum solo. Is this like their intro song for the concert? Okay, um, so we got a couple of more of these performances, I think, uh, at least one, no, this one's the last one for Rock and Roll Paradise. This one is at an outdoor music festival in Jeonju, I think. Okay. Ooh. The flame jets. We do get the drum solo. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> that giggle mid drum solo is great. built-in crowd work for the song just means this has got to be like a very fun song to have in concert that guy's getting pumped How cool. Um, yeah, so Rock and Roll Paradise, even though we don't really have the lyrics for this one, um, is a fun song. It feels like it's built for concerts, right? Uh, the, the drum solo in the middle, the break for Ja Young to address the crowd and see how they're doing and do a little crowd work. Um, like the energy of the song just feels like it is specifically built to be listened to live. Uh, which is really cool because like I I would love to see that energy in person. Um, I have a feeling like it takes on a whole different character when you get to see that live. Next up is what I've been like really, really excited for uh, as a insomnia. And I saw this was on the album, so I didn't include it in our cover section. I included it here. This is Rolling Quartz's cover of Good Night by Dreamcatcher. Um, and color me all sorts of bumped. I love Good Night. Um, I think it was the th third ever song I heard by Dreamcatcher after uh, Fly High, Chase Me, and then Good Night. So, um, yeah, pumped. Absolutely pumped. Ooh, a guitar version of that, like, music box sounding opening. They're really making it their own, huh? That kind of gave me, like, a... Oh, I'll have to think about it. Young doing a little rapping.
All right, Irie. And Hyunjung's just like, oh, I'm here too. I'm gonna shred my face off. All right. I feel like that plays into the lore a little bit of Holler. Is there like ongoing lore with uh, Rolling Courts? But it feels like those two were connected a little bit in terms of music videos. Um, I do have to say that slapped so hard. Granted, the bass song is so, so good uh, that just like amping up that rock sound of it even more uh is going to be a really interesting twist on it um i think they did a fantastic job of bringing it to a rock band without losing the group feel of the vocal that makes that song so good um and you can really tell that they're fans like because of the care that they took with this song um i am very very curious to see like if there was any interaction between the two groups and if they like i'm pretty sure i remember hearing that dreamcatcher knew of this cover and were like really happy about it um but i don't know for sure that's just an inkling of me hearing that somewhere uh, during the deep dive for Dreamcatcher. But either way, this was wild. This was so good. Um, mm. All right, let's see this uh, live version of it. Who's doing Dami's part? Is that Hyunjung? I would love a true collaboration between Rolling Courts and Dreamcatcher.
I'm trying to think of like who else I would think a like a fantastic collaboration with Rolling Courts would be. Uh, like especially like I wonder what a male vocalist with them like doing harmonies with them and rocking out with them would sound like um or maybe like as a like a rapper to do that kind of rock rap uh combination sound and i'm trying to think of like who would be a cool fit you know what would be dope is if we got a track with them featuring Felix from Stray Kids. His deep ass voice on a rock track just sounds like it would be ridiculous. Um, not that they're, you know, like I just feel like that uh, as like a feature that would be really, really cool. Um, anyway, yes, that all came about because I I want to hear a real collab between them and Dreamcatcher. I feel like it would be fantastic. The amount of craziness that would come out of it i'm sure would be wild uh and i believe that is the end of the oh no we have azalea up next and then higher um okay so azalea we've heard already and it is probably my favorite song of rolling courses so far that we've heard um Although that Goodnight cover really comes close and Delight was also wonderful. But Azalea is what really made me enamored with Rolling Courts in the first place when we saw the music video way back in the first look tournament. Um, let's check out the live version. This song is so good. Oh, look, there's <laughs> there's an insomnia there. We can see the uh, Mongi. Oh, it's from this same concert. Okay. The dynamics of this song are so good. For whatever reason, this song always gives me like Foo Fighters vibes in the best kind of way. Thank you. 
Yeah, we had an overheat. All right. Yeah, that song I have heard so many times. So, so, so many times. I listened to that on repeat for months after we did the initial reaction to that song. Um, and it is by far and away my favorite Rolling Court song. And like, I think uh, the live version does it so much justice it's got so much character to it again i think this is just the definitive way to hear rolling court songs which is really cool right like there's something to be said for a rock band that just sounds better live and there's this nostalgic charm to the energy of a small rock venue in this fans packed in there enjoying the hell out of it and just shredding up the stage uh man love it all right next up is i believe the last song on the album called higher uh and it's a theme of a show that they changed the lyrics to and it's a cover i think and rearranged And it was like a baseball show, if I remember correctly. It's one of those songs, excuse me, that amps you up and like motivates you to do your best kind of deal. It sounds like they do really well with like an anime OST.
Uh. Irie with the wah wah pedal on there. I think that's the first time we've heard them use like effects pedals in a song, like really heavily. Um, that's cool. I don't know if that's something that they do often or not. Um, but it's the first time I've noticed it. Um, yeah, like it, it gave off very anime OST vibes, which makes sense because I believe it was a remake of sorts of an anime OST for this show. Um, I also think that it's just got that very uplifting, motivating kind of sound to it makes you want to put in your best very good like kind of workout song um then again like a lot of these songs are really really good workout songs but to wrap it all up because we've been going for quite a while on this one uh is this album is fantastic every song is a banger um i think azalea is my favorite still on the album but good night is so good that cover is fantastic delight is also really really amazing i think uh that put this album's best foot forward really in saying okay this is the vibe that we're gonna get out of it and then like conceptually holler was really cool that music video was gorgeous um what do you guys think what was your favorite track on the album uh and i am going to say that with that it's going to be it for tonight so till next time love you bye